Hi everyone, welcome to Angel Monday for the 7th of February all the way through till next Monday, the 14th of February, which is 14th of February. Okay, I don't know if I was live then, so I'll say it again. We're doing Angel Monday, welcome, and we're bringing through the angels' messages for the, all of next week, so the 7th to the 14th of February. I'm Rachel Skoltok, Angel Medium, and we're also going to talk about the little ways that you can unblock your energy channels so that you can receive louder, clearer messages from your angels. Because sometimes we block the angels from helping us and I want to show you how to get past that so that you can get really clear, insightful guidance for your life because you really need it, right? I was talking to someone this morning who has been asking for guidance for a little while and they were going through a phase of feeling like it just wasn't coming. They weren't feeling that, that depth of support. And all of a sudden, in the last week or so, they've had signs and support and opportunities all turning up synchronistically that are giving her absolutely no doubt that she's on the right track, that she is supported, that the angels are real, and that they are actually helping her and responding to those intentions and um, goals that, that she's been putting out. And also her prayers, you know, sometimes we pray because we really need something and we don't know how it's going to come about. And I've noticed with people that if they don't see how something is gonna work, it's very easy, it's like a, a human trait, it's very easy to get deflated and feel like it's not gonna happen. Because we, we're impatient, right? I'm impatient and we want to see and we want to know how it, it's all going to figure out and if we have a dream you know I want to start my spiritual business I want to meet my soulmate twin flame beloved love of my life I want to heal this health issue or this um, situation that's in my life that, that is proving to be challenging and if we can't come up with the answers ourselves or it doesn't show up quickly, it's very easy to give up and get depressed and anxious and and to just feel like, you, why bother? And that's such a shame because the way the angels work is that they, they, they help you, they bring you support in the way of letting you know that they're around you, answering your prayers in that way to say, hey, we're here and we're with you and we hear you. And they also answer your prayers with guidance. And guidance is an actual kind of, it's like receiving a letter in the mail, right? <laughs> or an email. Is that you can open it and read it and you say, okay, this is what I need to do in order to follow, in order to get what I'm, I'm wanting, what I really desire. And in that way, they help you just go through, can you hear the birds outside? They help you to, um, to navigate a path to that which you didn't know you could you could do. So I want to show you how to do that, you know, because it's important. It's so important. We haven't got we don't have the brain capacity, if you like, to be able to know everything. Like we don't know everything. We can't see everything. And sometimes we can be pessimistic about things just simply because we don't know how it's going to figure out. But if we reserve that judgment and res hold back on that disbelief and we trust there is a way and the angels will help me to find it, what happens to that depression is it just goes away because you know you're on a path. You're not feeling held back and stuck and stagnant and trapped and hopeless and worthless and all of those things that we tell ourselves when we get stuck, right? Good morning, good morning. Hi, I can't see everybody's comments yet. But I know that you're here. Okay, so I want to first do the reading. I'm just going to take Wi-Fi off my phone because I'm wondering if the Wi-Fi is a bit slow today. All right, I'm going to do the reading first. We're going to work with the Archangel Michael cards and, of course, the Archangel Power Tarot. And I really love those. And we're going to ask the angels for some guidance for the week ahead. And then I'm going to go into a little... Um, give you a few tips about how you can unblock yourself from receiving that really important guidance from the angels. Because I know some of you just come on for the reading and you don't want to hear about my other stuff. <laughs> That's okay. We'll do the reading first and then and then we'll move into 
into how you can clear it's like a little mini workshop from me so the angel of the month we've got two archangels of the month in february and that's archangel zadkiel who's the angel of um forgiveness the angel who helps us to transmute our heavy um, emotional energies that we're carrying with us using the cosmic violet flame. So you could say he's the angel of the violet flame. And the violet flame is an energetic tool that we've been given to um, heal ourselves of all the heavy karma we're carrying. And the other archangel is his twin flame angel, and that's Archangel Holy Amethyst. And she works through amethyst crystals, but she's also um, an angel of compassion, and she really helps you to do self-care and love for yourself. So I thought that I would invoke both of those angels today to work with us for the um, for the reading today. I don't know why I can't see. I hope you can all hear me and see me okay. Okay, so before we get started, let's bring down the light of the angels and just visualize yourself inside this beautiful beam of white light surrounding you and in, just embracing you and enabling you to click out of any ego fear energy and going into your higher self, the part of you that knows how to connect with angels. And just take a take a breath. And you can even ask for this, this energy to protect you, to um, surround you in protective angelic light for the rest of the day. So take a deep breath and set an intention. What do you want to receive this week? What do you want to achieve? And what would you like to release? And as we do that, I'm going to call upon Archangel Michael first. And I thank you, Archangel Michael, for being with us here in this session, for providing immense light for everybody, and for bringing protection, placing a dome of your beautiful light over all of us, an impenetrable light through which nothing negative can penetrate. And we ask now that you release any lower energies, any fear, any toxic energy, any heavy emotions that you now release and transmute them to the light. And that you bring about the clearest, most insightful message for everybody who is watching. Thank you, Archangel Michael, for protecting us on, in all ways, physically, emotionally, psychically, financially, in, on every level. And so it is. And I also invite Archangel Zadkiel and Archangel Amethyst. And I ask for your guidance and insight for this reading this week. Thank you for helping everybody to be receptive to your messages. Amen. All right. So I'm going to actually start by shuffling the Archangel Power Tarot now that we've got the angels gathered. And the sun went in outside, so it's gone a little bit dark in my room. <laughs> this Monday morning. So how is everyone? Okay, so thank you. I'm feeling the three archangels working with us, Michael, Zadkiel, and Holy Amethyst. Right. And what we're looking for is an energy insight. We also want to know how to overcome obstacles and what guidance they have for us, given the week that we are in. Okay. Beautiful, okay, and one card from the Archangel Michael deck. Four cards. So Archangel Zadkiel and Amethyst are the angels of the month and we'll be working with them at the, um, at the attunement session on Friday the 18th of February. So you can purchase a ticket to that. We do a live healing and, and um, you get to learn how to work with Zadkiel and Holy Amethyst. So the first card out, this is the present situation, what we most need to know this week. And this is stand up for yourself. This is about, you look for times and places where you shrink, where you put yourself down or you feel put down. And you simply just don't, don't show the fullness of who you are. You don't shine your light. This is showing you that it's time for you to stand up for you and what you believe in. Now, that doesn't always mean having arguments with people or, or you know, sometimes it's about speaking your truth, right? Gabrielle is all around the throat chakra, standing up for who you are, believing in yourself and believing in your truth as well. So that also means that sometimes you have to take steps to 
back yourself. So that might be, okay, you've been talking about writing a book for years and months and weeks, and you just haven't written that first chapter yet. You're putting it off. Stand up for yourself. Make some time and start because you've got to put your message out into the world. If you've been thinking about starting a business, going hiking, anything that feels like, oh, I'd really love to do that, now is the time. And it's not about getting permission from other people. It's not about being perfect. It's not about anybody else approving of it. It's about you standing up for you and your beliefs. So in this card, we've got Gabrielle riding the beautiful Pegasus as it takes off, right? It's, it's like a launching energy. It's leaving behind some darkness and it's moving into the light. I love how it went lighter in my, in my room as we brought this card out. And it's about claiming your space, claiming your power. You aren't here, what's that roomy poem about? You weren't here to crawl, you're here to spread your wings and fly. It doesn't exactly say that, but I'm, I'm summarizing it. Confidence, confidence doesn't come from, um, you know, you can't get confidence before you've done something, right? I wasn't confident at this work until I'd gone and done training at it and I'd practiced and I'd been, I'd been doing it for a while. The confidence came naturally. We have to learn things. We have to put ourselves on the path. We're not perfect before we get there. So I love that one. Where do you need to stand up for yourself and where do you need to take a step and claim your power, claim your dreams and your goals? The block card, I'm getting a bit of leap of faith energy with this thing as well. I feel like there's some of you that have been holding yourself back. You've been like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'll put it off a year. I'll do it next year. I'll do it next month. Uh, I'll just wait. Don't wait. Okay, that's not, this is not waiting energy. Again, we have got the same message more or less, but in a different way in the block card. This is the nine of, of Gabrielle. Gabrielle is standing behind this, this person who's digging a field. Right, they're, they're, they're preparing the ground for something, the, the plants that they want to plant. Okay, it's a bit of work, but it's worth it, and he's happy doing it. There's a joy from this card. So this is about, once you start something, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep stay determined and keep moving forward. Now, why is this blocked? Something has come in recently that has maybe taken the wind out of your sails, or maybe you're just tired and you feel like, oh, what? I can't be bothered. Keep going to the end. It's worth it. It's worth it. And also when you do that, and remember what I said earlier when we opened this session, is that when we start to take action, the angels in the universe come forward and help us as well. So like my client I was telling you about this morning, she, she had worked hard. She'd been talking to the angels. She'd been setting intentions. She took a step to do a course with me which then invoked all of these amazing signs and these opportunities. It's the fruits of her labor are coming forward now. Now, it took a little bit of time. It was an instant. And this is what this card's about. It's about patience, and it's about keep moving forward. Don't be over-reliant on what you see on the external. Just know in your heart that it's working because the angels are telling you that. Love it. It's all about faith, right? Faith is... Faith isn't about religion. Faith is about acting in a way that you that you know that the world is, that life loves you, that the angels are watching out for you, that there is support, there is money, there is a way, right? So this is the, the guidance card, and this is the Queen of Raphael. Now the Queen of Raphael, she's the Queen of Healing. She, so what would you ask from the Queen of Healing right now? Or the Angel of Healing, the Archangel of Healing? This is about really being true to yourself and following the path that feels right for you in your heart. It's, she's acknowledging your intuitive gifts, your psychic gifts, perhaps even your healing gifts. And she's letting you know as well that when you do things from a place of joy and excitement and that, that element of faith, things have a way of, of working out. Do you need to start trusting more in your intuition and the guidance that's been coming to you, right? That's one of the blocks. It's a lack of trust. It's, it's major. Most people go through so much self-doubt. They second guess their intuition until it's like flat as a pancake. And, and then they can't make a decision anymore because there's no energy left. 
right? You know, have you ever done that when you've gone between decisions too much, that you've overanalyzed them, that you just can't, you've got decision fatigue, you can't, you can't do it anymore. So trust the intuitive guidance that's coming for you. You're being led. Don't miss out on that. You're being guided. Um, she's got the book of life. They're sort of saying everything's okay, but you don't want to stay in, you know, in the sort of the mundane all the time. You ever, you know, what's it called in a river when you see these little patches of the river that, that are just kind of spinning around in circles, like little eddies, aren't they? Um, it's like, don't get stuck in an eddy. Don't get stuck going around in circles. Come out and go into the flow. Put your intentions out there. Outcome. Love it. Archangel Michael and Zadkiel and Amethyst are answering your, your questions. So the outcome is, look at this. Archangel Michael's standing on the top of a mountain. He can see the way forward and he's pointing you to it. He's got a sword that is ready to cut away any attachments of fear and negativity. Look out for this stuff this week. The kind of, it's the stuff that pulls you off track. You know, it might be negative remarks that trigger you. It might be criticism. It might be old, you know, the stuff that you went through when you were younger coming up to haunt you and it, it makes you forget who you really are, makes you trip up on your, on your self-esteem. Cut your cords with it all and just get on with being who you are. Get on with being what you want to get on with, your dreams, your goals, your intentions. There is a beautiful new idea coming to you. And one of the things about this card, it's like, don't let little problems turn into massive mountains, right? That you can overcome any any challenge. How do we blow things up, molehills into mountains? Is that we we might create drama around them. We put too much fear energy into them. So Archangel Michael's lifting you above that and he's saying, let me cut your cords to that which is slowing you down. And I think this is a perfect card to end on. Look, we started with standing up for yourself, your self-belief, your power, and we end with self-respect, which is pretty much the same thing. So it looks like it's a week of you saying no to some stuff and yes to some other stuff. It feels like no to everyone else's distractions and demands and opinions and yes to what makes you shine and makes your heart leap and makes your eyes sparkle and gives you a, an idea that you are worthy right that's that's so important it's so important so dear god and the angels thank you for helping me see myself as you see me through the eyes of love and respect right God and the angels have full respect for you. You've got to have respect for yourself and that's how you teach other people to have respect for you as well. And if they don't get that, they have to be loved from a distance. <laughs> they have to be loved from a distance. You know, I made, a, I made a, um, an intention last year that I was no longer going to be um, an option to, some, you know, to someone in, who I was making a priority. And I'm not going to chase people anymore. And I'm not going to, um, you know, feel like that feeling of like, why doesn't that person like me? I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that anymore to myself. You know, if that person isn't aligning with me, then, then they're not for me. Um, and, and that really shifts, makes a shift in your energy because you realize how much baggage you're carrying for other people and how, how much emotional energy you have to work through when you're um, when you're when you're in that situation, right? When you feel, you know, not good about who you are or what you are when around other people. And if you can't discuss it with them as well, if they won't if they won't communicate with you. Good morning, Ida and Donna. Hi. I love the picture of your doggy, Donna. Hi Kathy, hi Desley. I'm so sorry if there's more of you here and I'm not seeing your comments. I'm not sure what's going on. Facebook does weird things all the time with um, with comments, with everything really. <laughs> not that I'm not grateful for Facebook because I really super am. I guess I'll have to have a look at your comments later. All right, there's lights. It's going dark again. All right, the other thing I was gonna talk to you about are the four ways I'm going to write about this a bit later. What are the four ways that you might be blocking your 
messages from the angels. You know, I, I wrote a blog last week about how to talk to your angels because so many, so many people ask me this. They're like, I'm asking, but I'm not getting any guidance. I'm asking, but it just feels like crickets. I don't get any signs. So that's why I'm writing all these articles and, and talking about it because I want you to have those signs. I want you to receive them. So one of the ways that we, um, we block is just because we don't trust. So it's a sense of self-doubt, like not trusting what you're getting, not trusting your intuition, second-guessing it. You second-guess it away, right? Oh, it's just a coincidence. Oh, it's just a feather. Uh, I imagined it. So not trusting your own intuition, but also not trusting in the angels. And that's for many reasons, right? We might have trust issues um, in general, you know, from people letting you down in life. You might think, well, the angels don't love me either. You might have a massive inner skeptic from your ego saying it doesn't really exist. It's not real, right? So that can be a block. And that can be at, on a deep level where you don't even realize you're asking, but on some level you're, you're also pushing it away. So it's like putting your hands over your ears and that can come from low self-esteem as well, where you're like, oh, you know, t typical. I've heard that said so many times when people say, typical, they wouldn't answer me, uh, I knew it. So that that's a block. So if you're doing that, you need to do some work on clearing your energy and you also need to push that self-doubt aside and say, okay, I'm not sure if this is real or not, or I'm willing to trust just for today I'm just willing to trust for today. And you keep saying that every day. I'm just willing to trust. And that way you start to push away that egoic mind because the egoic mind is like um, loud. You know, it's like a loud person at a party. You just can't hear anything else because you, all you can hear is that person. It's, that's your ego. So you need to be able to get quiet and meditate just for a minute. Just breathe and push aside that, that inner voice. There's also an energetic component to that and releasing the energy of distrust. All right, the other thing is from the ego is control. Now, some people have a huge fear that if they do listen to their angels, that they're gonna get some sort of guidance they don't like. Or it's gonna make them, I'm gonna have a sneeze. No, no. Or it's gonna make them do something, make some life changes, or do something that they don't like, right? It might be might be big. You might think, oh, I've known for some time I'm supposed to leave this job or this relationship or this whatever, and I don't want to face it. So you subconsciously put that, you, you try to control, so you push that message away because on a, on a deep level, you're afraid of change. Some people are afraid that the angels are gonna take over their lives and gonna do something. That doesn't happen. That's not what the angels are there for. They are in service. They're not here to control you or possess you. That's not what it's about. You've always got free will. So ego trying to control or ego fear. So that's number two. One, not trusting. Two is ego control. Three is expectations. You know, I think all of us would love an angel to appear at the end of our bed with a scroll on which is written the rules and the <laughs> the steps we are to take for the next few weeks months and years right i'd love that give me a plan but that isn't how it happens and so because it doesn't happen in the way someone expects it to happen they tend to push away those subtler signs and and guidance and also, the angels talk to us in so many different ways. They go through other people, they go through synchronicity, they go through um, our different senses. We've got the psychic senses of seeing, hearing, sensing and feeling, touch and emotion, and also knowing. They'll drop thoughts into your mind sometimes. So when we don't understand exactly how the angels are communicating with us, and we have an expectation about how that guidance is gonna come, we, we push, we push it away. So that's another thing. Drop your expectations. Release that feeling that you think you know how it's going to come and let them surprise you. You know, because if you trust and you push that egoic control away, like I want a rainbow at four o'clock, please, like that's control, that won't work. <laughs> then you'll be surprised and your ego will shrink every time 
you get an amazing sign that really surprises you. You know, when it's something that's so goosebumpy that it takes your breath away or it just answers the question you've been asking or solves the problem, then the ego will, will start to shut up because it, it hasn't got an answer to that. It can't second guess that away. All right, and the last one is imposter syndrome. And you might be able to tell me if that's you. Do you get imposter syndrome? If you think you have to be like a special kind of person in order to receive angel messages and guidance and signs. Maybe, you know, like who, me, I couldn't do that. Everyone else is more intuitive than me. I just don't have that part of me. Or you just don't believe in yourself enough that, that it, it could happen. You think that there is something unique and that's not true. I, I used to think that too. I used to think, oh, well, you know, I, I haven't had the kind of childhood that I've read so many psychic people had, or I haven't, you know, been raised this way, and, you know, the people in my family weren't into what I was into, but I was drawn to it from an early age. It doesn't matter when you come to it, it doesn't matter if your family believe in it, it doesn't matter if you weren't born into a gypsy family or a uh, indigenous family, you are intuitive. And you have the ability to communicate with the angels. Imagine why would we be given angels if we weren't given the ability to communicate with them? And it's really important, right? So imposter syndrome is another sign that your ego is getting loud. It's like, it probably will, if it's coming through for this, it will come through for other things too. Like, who am I to have a great job or to do the business that I really want or to write the book on? You know, it it's, makes you feel bad about yourself. And one thing I've learned, and I've said this often, the most successful people that I've ever spoken to, right? I've spoken to authors, great spiritual teachers, musicians, artists, actors, people who are famous and people who are successful but not famous. Everyone has imposter syndrome. Everyone does. I have it too sometimes. And it's just a sign that your fear is getting loud. It's just a fear. It's not a truth. And that's what you have to remember. And I always, you know, me and my sister when we were young, we're both quite similar in this way. We used to say, um, if something feels scary, we should do it. Now, isn't that funny? We were really young when we used to say that. Not like jumping off cliffs scary, but something that makes us anxious, like public speaking or <clears throat> going to a party or d going on the dance floor first when we used to go out clubbing. Um, we should do it because it makes our stomach feel... Ugh! And that's the way that you get over imposter syndrome, is that you keep going anyway. You do what you want to do, you do what gives you joy, and you accept that there is a feeling of fear. And when it comes to that with your intuition and being psychic, all it means is that there's some information that you don't have yet about how it works, right? And that's another myth about being gifted psychically, being a healer, being able to receive angel messages and signs, and and to also pass them on to other people if that's what you want to do, is that it's supposed to just drop in naturally and you're supposed to know how to do it. And that's not true because there's so much in our lives, in society, where we're not, we need to learn how to develop those, those gifts and skills. And that's the truth. I'm not just saying that because I sell courses about this. I am telling you that because it's the truth. Like formal training is important of some kind. So, that's, that's today's message. I hope it's been helpful for you. And I just let me know, like, is this new time working for you? I started doing it a bit earlier because um, I've got my friends and, and followers in the US and the UK who liked an Ireland and all those places who like to um, come on and watch and, and often complain that they've missed it. So I decided to do it a couple of hours earlier. Let me know how that works for you. And also let me know which of those four blocks really stood out for you. Is it the trust, the ego control, the imposter syndrome, or that all your expectations? And one more week left to the Angel Communication Program. Have you booked your place yet? There's still room. And I've opened up the offer of the readings because they're so popular. So if you purchase the ticket and pay in full, you can also have a private reading with me as well, which is worth $497 so you're you're paying a lot less for that program because you're getting such a, a big bonus 
it's step by step how to communicate with angels how to get guidance so we're going to be giving you a chance to receive guidance for your own life which is important right you want to finish the program not just with skills and learning you want to finish with with your intuitive channels open clarity and trust in your own intuition and your connection with the angels the ability to read the angel cards in a way that is intuitive not using the book not using the words doing it so that you can receive that personal private message for you from the angels i'm going to teach you how to do that you're going to learn two angel healing techniques as well so that you can clear yourself of energy that is blocking you but you're also going to be able to use that on other people if you ever feel guided to do that in your own business or in in your family and friends there's so much in this program it's over six weeks we start next tuesday the 15th which is the day after my birthday 15th of february at 7 p.m sydney australia time there are replays and you get lifetime access to the whole course and two healing sessions and a reading that come with it as well so pop over to the um, link that I'll put in the comments so you can have a look just a um, a week to go so if you are thinking about doing it there is a payment plan you can pay over six months um, and you know you can set that up on my website and it will just direct debit once a month for six months you can you can pay that way or you can pay in full and get that free reading so I am here this week, um, I've already got a few appointments booked, but if you want to book a chat with me about the program, is it right for you, what's in it, what times does it suit your time zone, get in touch with me because we can have a quick Zoom chat or we can do it on the phone, I won't keep you on ages, it's just to see if it's right for you and I'm not a hard sell, it's, but, you know, so um, there's no obligation in, that, in other words. But I love to teach this program. It's so fantastic to see how many people go through it and go through a transformation. You know, start their own businesses, set up that business they've been waiting for for ages, leave the toxic situation they've been waiting for, open their gifts in such a way that now they've got a reliable practice of getting a message from the angels every single day of their life. You don't have to go through any more training. You, all you have to do is to, to do what I've given you. All right. Also, don't forget another calendar note. February the 18th is the Archangel Am Archangel Amethyst and Archangel Zadkiel Soul Star Attunement. So that is on February the 18th at 10 a.m. and that's our 90-minute Zoom session. You can purchase a ticket for that, and I'll see you there. I'll let you more know more about it. So, so Amanda says. Better timing for you? Cool, that's good. Victoria, the evening in the UK, yeah, I'll be there soon. I booked my ticket to see my mum and my sister, and my niece and nephew and brother-in-law and my cousins. And, and of course my friends. I haven't seen them for five years. Okay, lovely. I'm so glad that's working out for you. Sorry about the gurgling. <laughs> the gurgling stomach. All right. So see you. Um, see you through the week on Instagram, and um, see you next Monday. Don't know. Shall I do it on Monday? It's my birthday on Monday. I'll see. <laughs> I might pre-record it. And your blessings.